So I'm sure you saw the dyno video I posted of the blue 24S650 with the stage 2 Whipple kit doing a rip. Had no intake system on it. We wanted to see what the gain was with open throttle body because these are speed density, much like the previous F-150s and current F-150s. And uh, the car itself is very basic. It has long tubes on it, stage two Whipple kit. I told the owner, Michael, to bring it to us with the biggest upper he could he had, which was a 3.875, and he typically runs uh, an E30 mix in it, so I told him to get it out so I had the best use of fuel possible, and he filled it up with Sunoco 93. Uh, I'll get into that more, but it seems like it was still a pretty sweet tank of fuel because the power numbers <laughs> on the Whipple Stage 2 calibration were pretty uh, high to me, as well as what I saw in the data log. So, the uh, first pull I did on the car was last Friday, and it made 708, and the car was a little heat soaked, we just slapped on the dyno at the end of the day, and I just wanted to see what it did. And needless to say, I was uh, not totally surprised, but a little disappointed in that there wasn't going to be a lot of work in terms of trying to make more horsepower, right? Because we knew these calibrations were pretty wicked up out the gate, just based on the numbers we were seeing floating around and then people putting octane additive and race fuel and whatever in it. And they were, I saw some data logs early on and I knew they were making 20 plus degrees. I just didn't know how aggressive or sensitive the knock sensor logic was until obviously we've been looking at 24 plus Mustang recently uh, to know kind of how the the newer knock logic may function so anyway uh, put it on it did that tried to come back in on Sunday ran into uh, some stuff and I couldn't get in here so then I proceeded to put it on on Monday and Tuesday to tinker with it a little bit I re-ran the baseline when it was a little cooler and it ripped off <laughs> a 729 and made killer torque 550 plus somewhere around in there and the log showed 20 to 21 degrees of timing so I then thought well this is crazy let me do a backup rip and it made 719 so dropped 10 horse still the same timing so uh heat played a role in that probably and i think if i would have done a third one it probably would have made that 708 to 712 number so i took a break got real busy throughout the week came back to it tried to do some things with uh cam timing and fueling and I really didn't want to run 20 degrees of timing. And I hit up the owner and I said, did you realize this was what it was doing? And at the time I didn't know, but I just received a data log for a 2025 Whipple Stage 2. And it actually shows knock, re uh, it's pulling timing, uh, four or five degrees. So I know the, lo the logic works, it's not aggressive, but um, it just, shows how wide of a range they made it and I don't know if it's a hundred percent safe it's not really my um, way of doing things and that's fine but I wanted to try to make m more power or similar power with less I wanted to see if there was uh, something that could be achieved there so that was the uh, challenge I set for myself with this versus trying to just to send it and make a, a number uh, so I finally got a tune on there to make basically what the Whipple tune did 
with the 719, but I did it with about three degrees less ignition timing. Um, and this was all same temperatures. It wasn't the same day, but the ambient temp and the coolant temp chart and the manifold charge temp were all similar. I let it get to the same warm up cycle, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then I was really happy with that. And I decided, let's just see what the 3.75 does. So to back up a little bit, this is a Gen 6 Whipple, uh, similar to the Gen 5, but I know they did a little bit something different with the rotor pack, maybe something different with the manifold. Needless to say, the 3.875 pulley makes similar boost to what the Gen 5 did with the 3.75 pulley. So pulley to pulley, the Gen 6 will make more than the Gen 5, but that's because it is making more boost. So we were making about 11-ish, 11 and a half on the 3.875. Um, and that's what we made on the Gen 5 many years ago. And we tested on the black bean and on pump gas, I think I cleared 720 on it a couple times with similar ignition timing and that was on a dyno jet. These numbers probably read similar to a dyno jet if it has a really hard tire on it aired way up. If it's got a drag radial, the dyno jet's obviously gonna show less power because the drag radial is chewing up. But with a hub dyno, you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, that that I have to preface that because I think there's some market confusion that the Gen 6 is making tons more power with the same boost and it's not and this is proving that based on our previous experiences so this number for this boost on that timing on pump gas to me is normal uh, so then we put the 3.75 on and i think we got a little belt slip because this pulley wasn't a grip tech pulley and it only made like 15 more horsepower in some areas and then up here is only 10 you know 10 to 12 nothing crazy but it didn't really see a whole lot more boost this thing was peaking probably 12 ish so and i would say this is probably the absolute maximum i would want to run on uh pump gas assuming it's really good fuel 91 octane in certain areas like arizona california whatever they're not they're not going to see this so uh the timing was the same on this same tune i didn't change anything after this i figured let's just put 100 octane in it and see what more ignition timing does now that i know that i've got my calibration um, to do a little bit more with less and i'm comfortable with it so we swapped fuel and it basically was a little bit of a mix of ms103 and a can of boostane uh, and whatever mix he already had and this mix he already had may have already been sweet so it picked up all that and the the amount of ms103 was like probably one and a half gallons it wasn't enough to super oxygenate it or anything like that so i think that uh all of this is ignition timing and it cleared 792 and if we had pulled it higher obviously this is not 7800 we kept going to 8,000 plus. I think it probably would have cleared it 800 horse on that. But then, as you saw in the video, I wanted to try open throttle because it's always fun to see if that picks up any power. And I noticed this little, it doesn't dip here, but that rate of climb changed. And I thought, you know, is it VCT? Is it belt slip? So I had a hunch that maybe it was just an airflow thing and it is because look at what happened when we ran with the uh, open throttle this had proper cool down between but uh, maybe 15 minutes and it, it overlaid almost everywhere except for that spot and it made 797 um, so it's very interesting that's not to say that everybody needs to go out and run it open throttle body I think that maybe 
a percentage of that can be achieved by not running air filters or having some kind of screen system in there. And maybe it could do something similar with the closed box with no filter or screen system in there. Uh, going down the track, you have to be going pretty fast to see an, any kind of effect, but it is getting fresh air from those front vents and it may you know, achieve something similar to this. Now, on ethanol, this would obviously have another gain. Let's call it 30 more horsepower with no other changes, same ignition timing. Um, this isn't far off from what the previous generation blower is. Uh, we don't know if these engines are, the dark horse obviously probably has stronger bottom end, but the regular GT, I don't know. It's, to me, it's very similar to Gen 3 and we can keep buzzing it, but I'm trying to save that, that whole uh, philosophy of saving the valve springs for the next guy. But if this had a built engine, valve springs, everything else, just call it an illuminator short block. We could keep going with RPM and keep adding boost. And it's maybe this blower is more efficient as you add boost, not sure. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see pretty cool um, little experiment there with the intake um, I think that the calibration drove really good from Whipple there wasn't really a whole lot to change on it and uh, most of my changes were horsepower related some drivability stuff and a lot of transmission things where I sprinkle my flavor of 10R80 tuning in it and I already drove it on the road the thing absolutely rips shifts great I think that this combination even on the lower timing is really fun to drive it's just like on the edge of a you know not a decent drag radial if I had like a Mickey Thompson on it it probably would have hooked this thing was spinning a nitto tire just a smidge and it felt great it's really fun to drive so anyway uh, just wanted to do like a screen share version of this. The audio is a little better since I have headset on with a microphone and um, figured I'd share my findings. We're able to tune these obviously now um, and we're working on the F-150 Whipple stuff once it's available and we'll keep on trucking. Thank you.